Armando Hasurungan biology and medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan. Uh, make sure to like. And here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and please post some interesting things such as your artworks. And you can change the quality of this video to the highest one for better graphics of these videos. So we're continuing on with the cell membrane series, looking at part three. And here we'll look at some differences between the membranes. So for example, in this gastrointestinal tract, we have the columnar cells, and then we have the lumen of the gastrointestinal tract and the blood. Now there are variations between membranes within cells. So for example, on the surface of these columnar cells where the villi are, their main role is for absorption and secretion of the membrane. Whereas this membrane is for communication with the other cell. And this membrane has interaction with the blood. So they all have different and specific functions within them. So what are some other possible differences between membranes within the cell? Well, membrane composition, the lipid or the protein, can differ, for example, between cells of different species, such as between a crab and a human. Membrane composition, the lipid or protein, can differ uh, between cells of different organs in the same organism. So, for example, in the human, you can have mucosal cells and you can have parietal cells with different membranes. Well, actually, they're both part of the same organ, but, for example, keratinocytes in the skin and mucosal cells of the gastrointestinal tract. So, cells of different organs in the same organism. Alternatively, membrane composition can differ between membranes of different compartments in the same cell. So, in this case, it can be organelles, for example. And membrane composition can differ between different parts, domains of the same membrane. So domains, some domains have specific receptors on them, such as integral receptors or peripheral proteins. So again, membrane composition can differ between different parts, domains of the same membrane. And finally, membrane composition can differ between different sides of the membrane, the leaflets. What I mean by this is the inner layer and the outer layer are different, consisting of different phosphoglycerides, for example. But for now, let's focus on this box, which states that membrane composition, the lipid or the proteins, can differ between membranes of different compartments in the same cell. So for example, here is a simple cell with villi on the top. Now, membrane of different compartments in the same cell. So we are focusing on how the different compartments are made out of different lipids that make up the membrane. Now, to look into this, we have to go back and look at the different type of lipid membranes. So remember, we have phospholipids, and then we have glycolipids, which consist mainly of cerebrosides and gangliosides, which we really won't look into that much. We also have sterols, remember, the, uh, which consist of cholesterol and ergosterol, and we'll look at cholesterol more closer later on. But we're now we're concentrating on phospholipids because they are predominant. And phospholipids can be divided into sphingolipids and phosphoglycerides. Phosphoglycerides consist of phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylethanolamine, phosphatidylserine, phosphatidylinositol, phosphatidylglycerol. And we also have cardiolipin. And for the sphingolipid side, we have sphingomyelin, which is also a phospholipid. So now going back to the simple cell diagram, for example, we have this endoplasmic reticulum, which is around the nucleus. Now, endoplasmic reticulum, what type of lipids is it predominantly made of? Well, about 17% of the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum is made out of phosphatidylethanol amine, and 40% of it is made out of phosphatidylcholine, and the rest vary. Now, if we look at, for example, a different organelle, such as the mitochondrial membrane, and there's the inner and outer mitochondrial membrane. What is it made of? Well, 35% of it consists of phosphatidylethanolamine, and 39% of it consists of phosphatidylcholine, and the rest varies as well. So you can see how there's varying amounts of different types of lipid membranes within different organelles. Now let's like look at myelin of a neuron. Myelin consists of 22% cholesterol, 15% phosphatidylethanolamine, 9% phosphatidylserine, 10% phosphatidylcholine, and 28% glycolipids. 
28 percent glycolipids. So you can see how myelin is obviously completely different because it contains glycolipids. And it needs glucose, obviously, for the neurons. Finally, the last um, type of cell we're going to compare these two is the plasma membrane of a red blood cell. Plasma membrane of a red blood cell consists of about 23% cholesterol, 18% phosphatidylethanolamine, 17% phosphatidylcholine, and 18% sphingomyelin. So now you can see how different cells in your body have different composition of lipid membranes. But all of these cells have something in common. They mostly consist of phosphoglycerides, so phospholipids particularly. And this is what we're going to look more, more into. So phospholipids, as we know, can be divided into two parts. Phosphoglycerides, which contains a glycerol backbone, and sphingomyelin, or sphingolipids, which is basically, essentially sphingomyelin. So phosphoglycerides, let's look at the chemical structure of phosphoglycerides. Here we have the glycerol backbone. And then we have the hydrocarbon, the fatty acid tail. And the fatty acid tail is hydrophobic. It does not like water. So it will be on the inner, it will face inside. Then we have the head group, consisting of phosphate, because it's part of a phospholipid, and also X, X being a head group. And this section is hydrophilic. It loves water, so it faces the water. Now the head group can be changed to a particular chemical structure. And this will change the charge, because normally, without a head group, it, this molecule will have a negative one charge because of the phosphate. So sphingomyelin, a sphingo, sphingolipids, is essentially sphingomyelin. So we'll just leave that as sphingomyelin, and we'll look at the chemical structure of sphingomyelin soon. And for phosphoglycerides, we'll ma mainly look at three structures, the three main uh, lipids, we can say. We have phosphatidylethanolamine, phosphatidylserine, and phosphatidylcholine. And we look at the similarities and differences between all of these lipid membrane constituents. But, and let's begin with phosphatidylethanolamine. So phosphatidylethanolamine has a glycerol backbone and a fatty acid tail. So here's a fatty acid tail. And of course it contains a phosphate with a head group of amine and two carbons. And the amino group is positively charged. So giving this molecule a net zero charge because of the phosphate and the amine group. Phosphatidylserine also has a glycerol backbone and two fatty acid tails, which are hydrophobic. The head group phosphate and also a protein-like structure on the top. And as you can see, there's two negatively charged um, ions and one positive, giving it a net negative charge. Phosphatidylcholine has a glycerol backbone, a two fatty acid tail, hydrophobic. The head group, there's a phosphate, and it contains also an amino group with four carbons, five carbons in total. So the positive and the negative of the phosphate gives this molecule a net zero charge. Now let's look at sphingomyelin. Now sphingomyelin has also a glycerol backbone, but as you can see here, there's some, some differences and there's no ester bonds. It still consists of two fatty acid tails. The head group consists of phosphate as well. And the, the, chemical, the chemical that binds to this is exactly the same as phosphatidylcholine. If you can see, there's one, there's one amino group with five carbons, also a net zero charge. But the major difference is, is that there's no ester bonds here, and also there's a hydroxyl group of this th first carbon. Now let's stop there and look at the fatty acid tail and what different structures it can form. Well, two different structures it can form. So if we look at this, a typical fatty acid uh, tail consists of a carboxyl group by itself, a carboxyl group, and also a hydrocarbon chain. The carboxyl group being hydrophilic, loving water, and the hydrocarbon part being hydrophobic. Now this is a typical structure of a saturated fatty acid tail. And you might have heard of unsaturated fat. So what is the difference? Well, if we take the same structure, 
However, the hydrocarbon has a bend in it, a double bond, which causes the bend, as you can see. So the saturated fat has all singular bonds between the hydrocarbons, whereas the unsaturated fats has a double bond, which causes this kink-like structure. So what does this mean? What different characteristics do lipid membranes have if they have double bonds? Well, we'll look more closely into this on the fourth part of the cell membrane video, and we also look at the role cholesterol has. So please watch the next video. Make sure to like this video, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.